Let's talk this through by speaking with a policy development and inclusion advocate, Mary Ikoko, who is joining me from Abuja. Thank you so much for joining us on the news at one. Talk to us how you think uh, the appointment, the choice of special advisors reflect the political ideology or agenda of the incumbent president, Bola Tinubu. Oh, I think that, um, I mean, looking at the computation of his, uh, uh, the eight special advisors that he just put out, I must say that uh, it really reflects uh, a serious-minded person. So when you hear that he's uh, very good at sporting talent, um, I can see that a lot of head hunting have gone into choosing those special advisors. These are thorough bred professionals in their own right. I recall seeing, seeing uh, knowing uh, Olu on that list, Dele Aleke and all of those people. These are people, well, I think that this is what you would call uh, round pegs in round holes. And uh, it goes a lot, it says a lot about what is coming. I think it's been an exciting um, two weeks for uh, any serious-minded citizen of this country. Uh, mm -hmm. The way the president is going and um, the bills he has assented his signature to so far. And uh, the, some of the activities that he made. And popping it up, those special advisors, kudos. It gives so much hope that we are in for something great in this country. Mm. So some have actually been reacting, you know, a majority that I've seen so far have been reacting positively, while others are actually of the opinion that how much of female representation do we have in this um, announcement, in these uh, special advisors who have been unveiled by the president, and how, and talking, also talked about the federal character, looking at the, uh, maybe the tribe and where they're exactly from in the part of the country. How do you react to this? Please come again. Let me confirm whether you can hear me. I can hear you now. Yeah, I'm talking about people's reaction, uh, critics' reaction. A lot majority that I've seen so far reacted positively to this news. But then others are saying, how much of federal character um, can we, can, does this reflect? And also the female representation in this announcement. Okay, so I am not, um, you know that I'm very big on uh, advocating for inclusion, particularly um, the women inclusion and youth inclusion. So that list uh, is also very impressive. Yes, out of eight, there are two women there. What he tells is that there's, it's been, the president has been very intentional with his appointment. There's diversity. You can see uh, two women out of eight, um, sometimes we, we get to see lists like this. You don't even find a single woman uh, in, in, hundred, uh, uh, in a list of 100. So two women in a list of uh, eight advisors. I think that's about, uh, it's still less than 30%, if I must say. Uh, but it gives hope that by the time he's able to you know, put together the remaining 12 advisors that you will begin to see uh, maybe more women. But so far, I, I, I hear the argument out there. Uh, there have also been arguments around there are how many Yorubas and two, two, one Igbo and all that. The truth is that we need Nigerians the, to get the best of Nigerians to fix Nigeria. And I am so proud of this president because I can see the signs are there. Why we want to see more women, we want to see youth, we want to see even people with disabilities, we want to see federal character represented. We must also know that these are members of his, these are his aides, his personal staff, and he must be given that um, allowance to choose people across the divide, across sectors. And so far, the names on the list, at least I know quite a number of them, and I want to say that it's quite representative. Um, we may want to see more, but this is a, a good sign for me. Because what is more important to me is to see, you know, people, competent people, people with competences uh, that have the right skill set for the specific jobs that they are given to. So when you see this list, you can see, and the particular uh, offices that have been assigned to them where they've been, uh, they'll be advising the president, you can see that a lot of thinking had gone through into the selection of those. The only side I may be uh, 
I'm a bit worried about is that I know Olu for sure, and I know where she lives, and I hope that Nigeria will be able to save that woman because I know what she's got to risk currently. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to pay, but I pay her. But I know that um, I'm almost certain that the president, uh, Bola Metinubu, will be able to figure out how to pay competent people to work for Nigeria. Mm. What is it going to cost us as a nation to really get the right skills, the right competences, and the right people to work for the development of Nigeria? Yeah, these Nothing are critical. is too much to pay for right people. Right. What we have so far, Sorry? these are critical. What we have so far, can you hear me very quickly? Mm -hmm. Right. So what we have so far, you know, talk about the uh, special advisor on monetary policy, uh, uh, the, that which, the, the one for energy, also for security mm -hmm. and, you know, communication strategy. You know, these are very critical areas. Uh, so how convinced are you that the names that are mentioned so far uh, will be able to form, you know, as, as a policy development expert that you are, you know, that they will be able to shape this administration policy? Um, so when I see a name like uh, Dele Alake, I see a name like Nuhu Ribadu for security, Dele Alake for uh, strategic communication and all that, and um, Olu for um, energy. I, I know for a fact, and so many of them on that list, I know for a fact that um, they are actually people who are not just only good on policy making. They are also good in the operational uh, level of these specific uh, areas. So I am confident, I am very, very confident that Mr. President has really, really, uh, I, I, I don't know how long it took him to gather these people together or if there are people he's been working with before, but I am so sure I can see, and even looking at their profile, you can see they are just not uh, out of flash pan kind of professionals. They are people who have done policies, who have done the operations, who have done the management at the operational level, as well as as well as strategic and policy making level of this. Uh, so they can actually become your de facto ministers if you like. But I think he has very good and credible advisors, and I look forward to seeing um, the the remaining uh, twelve. I think also. Absolutely. I think we are, we, we, are, we are in for something good. Absolutely. There is a lot to, to cover in the issue, in the history of Nigeria. And, and at... just to say, though, right. that policymaking is a, is a function of the minister. Mm. So they are advisors to the minister. So when you also get it right with the, the crop of people that are holding ministerial appointments, mm. working with this kind of top-notch special advisors, I think we are in for something good, really, overall. We continue to, uh, to monitor developments you know, from, the, from ASOROC and we'll talk about it as soon as they uh, emerge. A policy development and inclusion advocate, Mary Ikoku, thank you so much for your time.